if the divorce agree, if the divorce decree or separation agreement went into effect after 1984 and before 2009, the non-custodial parent may be able to include certain pages from the decree or agreement instead of Form 8332. You can see publication 1984 and pre-2009 decree or agreement and post-2008 for more details there. And then B, a pre-1985 decree of divorce or separate maintenance or written separation agreement between the parents provides that the non-custodial parent can claim the child as a dependent and the non-custodial parent provides uh, at least $600 for support. Okay, so how, when would this possibly take place? Now note that you, if you're looking at who is gonna basically get the benefit of the child on the tax return, it's usually gonna be the custodial parent, meaning the parent that the child is living with. However, you can imagine situations where the parent who this child is living with might not get the biggest tax benefit from them living there because possibly they're already head of household, for example, and maybe they don't have a lot of income and maybe it's not gonna have an impact on their earned in credit or child tax credit, uh, therefore, because you're only getting the refundable portions of them or something like that. And in that case, you can kind of imagine that the non-custodial parent might have a bigger overall tax benefit if they were able to basically claim the dependent. So you might have a situation where you would like the non-custodial parent to basically be uh, claiming the dependent. So these are types of things that would be best worked out in a divorce or separation or custody kind of agreement, taking into consideration these somewhat complex tax consequences so that they can be worked out, you know, not again, before actually filing the tax returns, right? So, so if that applies, you can drill down deeper into, into that. If you're looking at someone who is in a divorce situation as a taxpayer, you know, the question is how much detail do you want to get in on a divorce uh, situ situation? You can basically go over the tax law. And then of course the lawyers are going to be the ones that are going to be uh, hashing out any kind of divorce agreement who have hopefully will take into consideration tax situations. Okay. So if conditions one through four apply, only the non-custodial parent can claim the child for purposes of the child tax credits and for credit for other dependents, line 19 and 28. However, this doesn't allow the non-custodial parent to claim head of household filing status. So here we've got a separation between these two conditions as to whether they're gonna qualify for head of household or not, which I mentioned a second ago, which could be something that is largely dependent upon dependents. But in a situation where the non-custodial parent uh, is, is basically claiming the child, possibly they can get access to the child tax credit, but might not be able to consider that child in terms of support for the head of household. So again, kind of a sticky or kind of a confusing uh, situation which could often happen in these kind of weird uh, situations where you have this custody claims for the dependents. So the credit for child and dependent care expenses, the exclusion or dependent care benefits, or the earned, uh, earned income credit. So all of these often have impacts from whether or not you have a dependent, 